Hi folks, it's Andy. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Um, today we're back with another video analysis video. <laughs> um, so today, um, in a little bit of a departure from what we've done before, last time uh, we looked at a, an actual Shiite. It was the, um, I think it was the Inter High Final. Um, and then before that we looked at a grading. Um, what I'd like to look at today is a, an actual Ippon compilation video. Uh, now this is from the um, the 63rd All Japan Kendo Championships, as it says on the screen there. Um, it's basically um, it's a couple of years old now. It's a few years old now, uh, but it's a really really high quality video, and I thought it'd be a great chance for us to go through and have a look at some of the points because I do often get asked um, about you know the actual scoring criteria. Um, so we'll we'll have a look through them. We might run through them in slow motion and stuff, and and see. The differences or the reasoning behind, we'll have a look at, sort of a think about uh, the reasoning behind some of the points going on. So, uh, we're starting off with the intro. Um, before I do get started, by the way, of course, again, I haven't filmed this video. It's not my uh, it's not my video. Go and subscribe to uh, this guy down here. This is the person that originally uploaded the video. Um, so, let's get straight into it. So we've got a bit of a, an, an intro, of course. Um, so, like I say, it's from a couple of years ago, uh, but it's such a great, high-quality video, I thought it'd be worth watching. Um, really beautiful quality, actually. So, what have we got going on? Okay, so, yeah, now that's that's just beautiful. Okay, so, straight off the bat, um, it, it probably didn't make perfect connection, which is probably why this CNC at the front um, wasn't too keen on it. But um, I think why... Uh, they're awarding this one. Um, if we were, I won't do this on all of them. Otherwise, we'll be here, there, be here all day. But I think just from the fact that right from the middle of the Shi'ai Joe, um, the the chap on the right here starts to pile the pressure on. Very strong semi here. The guy on the left doesn't like the idea of that. He starts to retreat. He's getting out to far distance, but the 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 guy on the right is not having it either. He's he's straight in. And as you can see in slow motion, it's a little bit shallow. But to be honest, um, it's what's really interesting here is what I'd really like you to look at. Is look how they seem to be at a really far distance. And that's how this guy on the right here has really um, deceived the guy on the left in a way. Uh, in terms of the distance that he's got available. Because they're at a f very far distance. But all of a sudden, all of a sudden, they're at Isokuito. And that's happening in, in a split second. We're watching this in slow motion, don't forget. Now, what's also amazing is this, he's, he's managed to close in on that Mai in that um, split second and then instantly launch this, uh, this men attack, um, which again, like I say, it is a bit shallow, but it's come from quite a far distance, to be fair, the whole thing. Um, he step, he's taken a step in there, and now the the position of his left foot relative to the position of his opponent's left foot, if we're looking his left foot here and here, it's, it's a decent distance there. It's quite a wide distance, but he's going to fly in and he's going to hit that men. Um, so, yeah, great, great point straight off the bat. Even if, now the thing is, is like I say, it's a little bit shallow. It doesn't fully connect with the men but on, but it can be judged valid, which it is by two of the shimpan, um, owing to the opportunity that was created by the Kenshi on the right, okay? Um, that isn't to say that the Shinpan that disagreed with it is wrong either, because that's the point, all right? I'm not trying to be vague here, right? But the point is, is it's a consensus between three people on uh, a subjective value of what is um, a valid point. So that's, that's why it is difficult, of course. All right, but um, it's... Uh, a really nice example of semi anyway, regardless of the actual strike. Okay, nice Kote strike there. That was, that was, see how he, uh, again, that came from a place of semi. He started, raised his hands first like this. You see that? Watch him lift his hands here. Like that. You see that? It looks like he's blocking, right? But he's not really blocking. What he's doing, you see, he's kind of testing the water. You see how his opponent also raised his arms to follow because he wasn't sure if he was going to attack him or not. He's kind of training him to start lifting up his hands. So the next time that he comes at him, the hands come up and he's got that chance for Kote. Great example there. Really, really nice. 
So this time we're from Super ZDI. Uh, now that's that's a great opportunity. This is a, this is something that's often missed. Now this is something here. Uh, <laughs> we're going to end up going through all of these, but it's not a problem. Um, so this this uh, this chap facing the cam camera here, Ume Gatani, he's he's uh, he's very young at this point. Um, I think he was still a university student, and I, I often find that that the young lads do very well with these sort of points in. Um, in like the All Japan Championships or Adult Shi'ai because um, it's easy for adults to forget to practice, not forget to practice, but um, kind of lay off the practice of the Hikiwaza. So he's chosen a very, very good moment there where the his opponent thought it was safe to ret retreat and it just wasn't. You can see there he's hitting very, very um, cleanly on the men. Straight back for beautiful Hikimen. <clears throat> Next one. Nice. That's a textbook kote from Mr. Nishimura. Textbook kote from Nishimura there. As they come to separate, again, he lunges forward instantly. Now, it's very rare. Um, it's a very rare waza, actually, funnily enough. Um, usually from this separation position, from this separation position, almost all competitive players attack from men. It's very rare that they'll attack for a kode, especially from underneath, which is pretty much what, which is what he does here. Yeah, um, because as soon as that shinai dips down, as soon as from the opponent's point of view, they're starting to separate. As soon as that shinai dips down, his opponent's shinai dips down, he thinks he's going to come for men. He thinks he's going to come for men. So that he only needs him to lift his hands that much and he can, he, he, he's got that route to kode. So it's very, um, very interesting point, I, I must say. A uh, similar one there. Similar one there. Okay, so again, this time it starts from semi forward. And it's a very, very similar to the one before. You remember where the guy lifted his hands up first and then he took the Kote strike. Very much, very similar. We'll watch that one in slow motion so we can, uh, we can just analyze it a little bit more. Start to separate. Obviously, you are very uh, cautious after separating at any point. Um, it's a very dangerous position to be in. Strike could come at any moment. And essentially, after regaining the distance, see, he starts to bring his hands up. Now, we're not perf we're not really connecting with the kote there, to be honest. But um, this is this is part of what happens in Shi'ai at this level. Um, not all points perfectly connect with the Borgo. Um, but at the end of the day, he's really broken this guy's uh, kamae, um, and I think that's probably the rationale be behind why they um, they awarded that point because he, he really had him on the back foot, had his hands high up in the air. Obviously, it would have been a lot nicer if he'd been able to hit hit the actual kote baton. But when this happens at this speed, like I say, these referees they don't get to see it in slow motion, um, and these guys move super, super, super fast, um, and and you know you've got angles and all that to do um it's it's a difficult one when it comes to that oh you see there we're going really really nice hikimen as well just as just as his opponent was relaxing as he thought they were going to separate safely now here's really an interesting point here here's what i was looking at um as he steps back Look, what what I'd like you to look at here is we can see that the men is is hitting cleanly on the uh, the, the men baton, right? That's that's clearly a men strike. But what I'm looking at here is the actual opportunity. What I want to look at is the opportunity. This guy is completely um, kind of relaxed. He's he's completely um, not prepared to de defend himself, and I can see that because if we look down here, you see how his left foot's flat on the floor. You, if you put your left heel flat on the floor, you're going to get hit. That's the general rule to kind of bear in mind. You don't want to put your left heel down on the floor. And that's exactly what this, this guy's done here. So he's completely unable to respond to this. And all he can do is receive that beautiful men's strike. So when your sensei is telling you, keep your left heel up, listen to him. <laughs> so 
So what's coming next? Again, so now we're seeing quite a lot of these Corte strikes from this sort of Super Zeri separation. Um, let's have a quick look at that one again. We won't go quite as slow as we normally do. Um, but again, you know, he's he's convinced he's coming for men. He's convinced he's coming for men. So that's why his hands come this way, all right? And he, he, he tries to defend his men, but his, his, uh, his Corte is open and he loses the Corte strike. It's a very interesting, uh, you know, a very interesting Kote point that's that's hap happening a lot throughout these uh, this video. Very aggressive semi eye here. What an interesting. Uh, so here they're both very very aggressive semi between the two, and this guy here just just pips him to the post with that. Devon men there. They're really pushing against each other. He's testing the water with that Cote. They're really sort of clashing um, on a sort of spiritual level. And he's kind of drawing him. I quite like this one. He's kind of drawing him. He's like, come on then, come on then. And he's, he's kind of, this guy's so hungry to hit him. He kind of takes the bait, but the, the chap with his, his back to us, it's a different kind of retreat, all right? It's not the kind of retreat where you're trying to escape. He's he's fully prepared to strike as he steps back. As he steps back, he's laying that trap, all right? And there's his sort of chance to strike straight away. Um, it's quite hard to see in the video if that's if that actually hits or not again because it's so fast. But again, it, it's, it's set up so beautifully. Um, it, it looks like it actually glances off, but um, when you watch it at full speed, you know, it's very hard to see. And like I say, he's drawing him back. He's creating a fantastic opportunity. Um, and it, it is a really, really nice uh, opportunity created there for the uh, Devana Min. Um, and, you know, I, I believe his opponent uh, accepts that too. Again, we've got quite a similar situation. Um, however, now this is a really hard one to see, right? Because uh, this is a Kote Kaishi men, of course. Um, the red player looks like he thinks it's Kote. Um, and uh, the white player obviously has is, is returned that with a, with a men strike. Um, amazingly fast, amazingly fast in uh, adjusting the, the distance there. But a um, bit of a difficult one to analyse properly on the camera angle. Uh, now this player on the right is one of my favourite players of all time. Again, we're from the separation. Are we going to see another Kote strike that we've been seeing? We are. But it's a little bit different, isn't it? This time it's the Dibana Kote. Um, so, again, what's, what's happened here is the, uh, the player on the left here has sort of set a trap in a way by um, starting to move backwards. Obviously, they're the one that's retreating out of this out of this stalemate. Um, and then what what he's done is 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 kind of ready. He's ready as the um, as his opponent starts to step in. He's he's re ready to immediately strike. It's it's a fantastic uh, opportunity for for a Kote strike. He's uh, he's already um, locked and loaded, as it were, and that Kote comes in straight away as soon as he lifts his hands up. Um, that's that's a a really high level Devana Kote that, that that's kind of um, it, it, it's almost superhuman. <laughs> Beautiful strike. And here we go again. What have we got this time? I see. So this is quite an interesting uh, retaliation from his opponent. It's the same pair from before, but what we have here now this is this is something I see quite a lot. Um, this is something in Japan as well, and with like lower level, like high school level um, players, um, and in in outside of Japan as well. This this idea of 
throwing a feint to the men and hitting Corte is very, very popular. And it works to a reasonably good extent. But here's a fantastic example of how to do it properly. Because what many people do is they'll stand in the Kamae and then out of nowhere, just out of the blue, they'll feint men and try and hit Corte. Uh, and it doesn't work because they haven't built up the belief in the uh, opponent that they're gonna that, that their men is under threat. All right. Whereas if you watch this example, Mr. Yonia here on the right, he he's threatening men straight away. This this here, we pause it on this frame here. This looks like a men strike, doesn't it? Right. This looks like if I hit play now, he's going to hit men. Now, of course, we know that he's not because we've seen it once already. Instead, he comes in with that beautiful Kote strike. Um, but the point I'm really looking at is how he applies that semi first here this looks like men he's applying semi towards men yeah he's he's putting the idea in this guy's head i'm coming to hit your men right and it, this this guy here i think it's uh mr katsumi he he falls for it and he, he lifts up his arms as you would <laughs> if you were if you were uh put under that amount of pressure and in comes this wonderful Kote strike. Yeah, that's how you do that waza. Yeah, you don't just from nowhere, just throw it out there and hope that it connects. Um, that works against lower level opponents because they, they kind of panic. But if you really want to do this waza properly at a high level, you have to apply that semi, you have to put that pressure on um, and make them believe that their men is under threat. So fantastic Kote strike there. So this is the same two again. I guess this is the, the Shobu. Let's see what's going to happen. Lots of semi there from... Ah, now you see, again, wow, this is such a... I love these videos. I really love these videos. So do you remember that first point where the guy piled on the pressure, piled on the pressure, the guy broke and he hit that men. This is very much the same pattern. However, um, Mr. Yonia here isn't breaking. All right, so he's like, no, 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 I'm not having that. He, 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 he's, he's kind of, he's obviously retreating a little bit, but at the same time, he, he knows that his men's under threat in this situation as his opponent starts to really close in on him. However, it's a kind of double bluff for Mr. Katsumi because what's happening is he's really threatening men again. This, this action here of dipping the Kensen yeah, dipping the Kensen here, it's lower than Chudan no Kamae. Um, most people interpret this as a threat towards the men, all right? It really feels like the person's going to come from here, come to men, because most people don't strike Kote from here because they'd have to come underneath the Shinai, which most people find quite difficult, all right? So he's, he's coming in forward. Um, look at that. Wow, what a strike. He's coming in forward. He dips that Kensen. It really does look like he's going to come for men, right? Even me watching it first thought that he was going to come for men. And what he even does, um, if we can catch it, but it was so fast. But he, he even gives a harai to the Shinai. He gives a slap to the Shinai, which just helps... Uh, the, the arms come up there. It just helps the hands come up and gives him that chance for that wonderful Kote strike and uh, allowing him to win the match. Great point. Absolutely great point. So again, here we are to the ZEIA away. They separate. Oh, look at that. That was a lightning fast Debana Kote. Lightning fast. I'm going to have to watch that a few times to see that myself. Wow, I think we'll watch that one in slow motion, eh? Because that was super fast. Again, it comes from that separation <clears throat> where the the chap facing the camera here uh, is is sort of hungry to take men. Yeah, look at that! Wow, <clears throat> and this also goes to show, right? This also goes to show. I want you to look at the moment of impact of this kote. This really does go to show. Right, um, I've skipped past it a little bit. I know you told me in the comments how to control YouTube, but I've forgotten already. Right, <clears throat> look at his look at how he's attacking men, uh, Kote here. Right, he is fully straight on and square to his opponent. 
right? How many times do you see people, um, certainly not at this level, but at lower levels, where they try to hit Debanakote by throwing the head over to the side and hitting this way like this, right? This isn't, that's not how you do Degote. You know, you have to keep a good posture, good strike, and then you move after you after you've made the strike, right? Um, which is exactly like this. I, I really like that. I really like how he's he's kept his he's kept his kamae, um throughout his strike. I think that's really fantastic. Um, and I would say as well, I'm not sure about his hand position after afterwards, but. Um, the Zanshin itself, he's sticking to his opponent there. He's not, what lots of people tend to do is they tend to kind of separate and bounce away and stuff like that, like this. Um, it's not good to do that. Um, it's very dangerous. If you don't uh, actually get awarded the Kote, you could receive a strike. Um, instead, no, he's closing the distance. He's making sure that he's claiming that Kote strike. <clears throat> Fantastic. Really, really nice. I think there's only a couple more to go. I see, so now what's going on here? A lot of pressure there, a lot of pressure there. Bit of a deadlock going on. Tries for Kote. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful door. So what's happened here? We've had a big build up of pressure between the two. They're, they're really kind of testing each other. Throws a Kote in there to see how he'll react. He's not... Uh, essentially, this is this is a lot like... All right. Um, this is a lot like the video I put out about Ojiwaza. What what uh, Mr. Shodai here is doing is really turning up the heat on his opponent here. He's really kind of building him up, right? He's, he's, he's kind of building him up and up and up and making him... Getting him into a situation where he's going to want to attack more and more and more. And then what he's going to do is just going to push the button on him that's going to make him go uh -uh, like this and attack so that he can perform his waza. And that's exactly what he's done. This whole process, this whole process, pretty much from the start, is Mr. Shodai essentially winding this guy up, ready to ready to um, force him into making, a, making an attack, which is exactly what he's done. See, he's, he's kind of annoying him a bit, winding him up. And even this guy here, you know, this men strike, this this ain't a full wholehearted men strike. This is a, a, a kind of, I wouldn't go as far as to say a panic strike, but this is a result of the pressure he's been put under. And then we've got this beautiful door strike as well. You see how he's not like flailing his arms around. It's, it's on target. Good posture. He's turning his hips into it, but his hands aren't all over the place. Um, it's it's textbook door ippon. Absolutely brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Uh, and that's the guy uploaded the video asking you to subscribe. So I don't think we need to see that. Um, <laughs> uh, so that's it. Um, that's just like I think like the first round if bonds or something or the second round. It's not all of them. Um, it was just an experiment though. Uh, what did you think? Um, obviously it's a different format again because um, it's a different type of video that we've watched. Um, First we watched the grading, then we watched the Shi'ai, now we've watched a, an Ippon reel um, looking at the actual points. Uh, what did you think? Which did you like? Uh, what would you like to see me do more of? Uh, leave me a comment down below. Let me know if there's a video you'd like me to cover on this sort of analysis video. Remember though, if it's like a half hour video, it's not really going to work. Um, <laughs> it works best with these short ones that are like uh, five to ten minutes long. Um, other than that, uh, thanks a lot for watching today. Don't forget to do all the like, share, subscribe, all that sort of thing. Um, shop at Kendo Star, uh, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.